Hello everyone. Uh, let's take a look at another proof for one of the converses. In this case, this theorem states that if the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this is a theorem that gives us another tool to determine whether or not a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here, uh, the given information is that the opposite angles are congruent. So we know that angle A is congruent to angle C. And we know that angle B is congruent to angle D. And again, in this case, if I want to show that this is a parallelogram, the way that we have to do that is by using the definition. So we need to show that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So if we start with our proof now, we can start with our given information. So our given information is that the opposite angles are congruent. So we know that angle A and angle C and angle B and angle D. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to assign some variables to the size of these angles. I don't know how big they are, but I'm going to represent them with an angle measure. I'm just going to use x and y. So I'm going to let the measure of angle A, I'm going to say that's x degrees, so this is x. And then let's say the measure of angle B, we'll call that one y. Okay. Because A and C are congruent to each other, that means that the, uh, they have the same measure as well. So then, just using the definition of congruent angles, we can get that the measure of angle C has to be X, right? Because these have the same measure there. And we can get the measure of angle D, that one has to match up with angle B, so that has to be Y degrees. Okay, so the reason I'm assigning variables here is because I want to write an equation that represents all of the angles. Because this is a quadrilateral, I know that the sum of the interior angles has to be 360 degrees. So, I can write an equation then. I can say that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, measure of angle C, measure of angle D, that has to be equal to 360. And again, that's because A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. So this was a corollary to the polygon interior angles theorem that we saw previously. So now I have this equation, and I have some variables that represent each of these. Uh, so I'm going to do some substitution. And what we end up with, so A was X, B was Y. C was X, and D was Y. And that's equal to 360. All right, we have some like terms you can combine together. So I'm just gonna do some algebra here. So X and X is 2X, Y and Y, we get 2Y, and that's equal to 360. And then dividing everything by two, we end up with X, plus y is equal to 180. Okay, so we know that x and y together is 180. Let's undo our substitution. So if x and y are equal to 180, that means the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B has to be 180. And y also represented angle D. 
So we also know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D is 180. So then looking at our diagram, A and B together, those two equal 180. And also A and D together, those two equal 180. When two angles add together to be 180, we know that means they're supplements. So then angle A and angle B are supplements. And also angle A and angle D are supplements. And that's just the definition of supplementary angles. All right, so we're almost there. Because I know that these consecutive angles are supplements to each other, I know that the lines then that contain those angles are parallel to each other. So if A and B are supplementary, that means that BC and AD have to be parallel. And the same thing goes for A and D. If these two angles are supplements, AB and CD have to be parallel. So we have AB is parallel to CD and also our other two segments we have BC is parallel to AD. And our reasoning here, this is one of our parallel line theorems, this is actually a converse, so this is the consecutive interior angle theorem converse. And now that we have the opposite sides parallel, we can finish up. So therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram by definition. which is what we wanted. So starting with the opposite angles, we can show that the sides have to be parallel, which then in turn means that ABCD has to be a parallelogram.